Hello everyone and welcome to this walkthrough of the text guide for the Origin Links tournament. Mr. RJ, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Flames. Great advice uh, alongside my good buddy Tommy. Awesome, awesome. Lovely to have you here. And as always, uh, for you that are watching here, we're going to go through uh, hole number one to hole number nine here. You will be able to see in the uh, video description down below time links for direct link to the specific hole that we're talking about. So when we talk about like, for example, you want to get some advice for hole number four and you really have spot on advice or spot on notes on hole number one and the rest of them, then you can click down in the video description below and come directly to hole number four and just hear us talk about hole number four because this will be a video for around 20 to 30 minutes. So you do have that in mind. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button here on the channel for more uh, content about the tournament. Check out the playlist section for rookie division and also pro and expert. <sighs> it's time we're going to start out with hole number one a part three uh, and um, just before we start with hole number one i need to add as well that uh, these holes has been played before so there is no new holes you can practice some of the holes on tour number four for rookie and some of the holes for tour number five for rookie and some holes tour number nine for pro and expert and some holes on tour number 10 for pro and expert so there we go hole number one rj how do we drop this hole in one uh first i'd like to just put out a little disclaimer real quick if that's okay um and that is that when i give advice i'm giving advice uh you know as you all know uh for how to play the rookie hole but there's a lot of people out there who play with much higher level clubs than a lot of people in rookie so therefore you know i may give a piece of, of advice just keep in mind i'm giving advice to people who have an extra mile level three four five have a you know thorn low level maybe even some snipers you know out there that are lower levels so you may find more aggressive ways but i'm trying to you know make this as doable as possible for you know just about everyone in rookie with that being said, for hole number one, right off the bat, I'm going to go to it. If you have a level three sniper or better, you can use your sniper taking the black line for the rough bump. I love the sniper because it has 100% accuracy, very easy to adjust, very small, tight target. Uh, if you do not have the level three sniper, I would go with the Viper one to two backspin and uh where that black box is it's showing you a rough bump right in front of the sand yeah the rough bump is definitely from the front tee absolute rough bump and then you maybe wonder if that is going to be the play for pro and expert and master and that it will be not uh, the reason for that is that it's so much easier to play in between the bunker stair in, in the middle to bounce it over to the pin sure you can play the rough bump but if you do miss the rough bump there coming in from second tee or something, you will bounce over the whole green. Sure, you will do that in rookie as well, but it will be so much easier to adjust for a lower distance in rookie than it is for pro and expert. Have in mind here that the wind is going to affect the ball big time here. First and foremost, I need to say that you need to add 15% of your normal adjustment. So if you had like five miles per hour, you're going to add 15% and that is going to be adjust for 5.6, 5.7 miles per hour instead. If having tailwind and bouncing over towards the pin, the ball guide is going to be extended, which means that you need to add a little bit more backspin. The normal amount of backspin is going to be two and a half to three bars of backspin. So having tailwind, then you need to use four. So you do add one bar of backspin if having tailwind because of the first bounce. So having headwind then, then we need to go the other way. The ball guideline will be compressed, which means that we will definitely put the bunker and the rough in play if we're using too much of backspin. So going with two bars of backspin, even maybe one and a half bar of backspin instead while going for that rough bump is going to be the play that you do want to go with. And again, the reason for that is that the ball is going to be affected differently in the different type of wind. So as you can see here on the club selection, sniper for prone expert, on master, sniper or quarterback. It depends on which type of ball you're going to choose. If you're choosing a bandera ball with a lot of wind resistance, wind resistance 5 with less power, then you will most likely play with a quarterback. If you're having a kingmaker 
or a dead ball or something like that then we'll have more distance therefore playing with a sniper so yes hole number one i think we will get some hole in ones on that i'm looking forward to it at least so hole and number two we come to a part five and this part five it could be very tricky uh it, yes it, it could be very tricky and uh a lot of mistakes will be made but they don't have to be made and that's why you're watching this guide right now i would bring a quarterback a big dog and i would stick a quasar in my bag as well uh first thing you want to do is you want to aim near the top of that little fairway by the, the patch of trees However, I believe this hole goes downhill because so many times my ball carries, and this happens to a lot of people, you end up bouncing on the rough or, or going in the sand. So adjust back a minimum of two rings before you even start adjusting for the uh, wind. Because we're using full topspin on this hole, I would probably back it up a full five rings if you're using the quarterback. Then you could use full top spin, full right spin for the quasar, and take your shot, curl it to the right, setting up a nice second shot. If the ball lands perfectly, you should be right next to that uh, sand trap in the fairway, giving you a nice clear view where the uh, second fairway kind of dips out. Now, the flag should be on your right-hand side. Be very careful. Do not use curl because you will end up clipping those trees and that'll throw you off completely hence why i wanted to bring the quasar three side spin to the right will be enough for your drive but you could use more however for your second hit to get it closer to the flag you're going to want to use full right right side spin because you can't use the curl and uh, I believe you use about one top spin. Same thing, make sure you don't land in the rough or whatnot, and you should end up right next to the pin with an easy chip. Yeah, and uh, I would have to start to say that this is an eagle hole. This is not a hole where we will see many albatrosses, so don't be mad just because you're having a hard time making the eagle. When it comes to playing from the second tee, uh, we can skip the thought of having the quarterback because we do need distance for our drive and it's uh, completely through true the, the thing that RJ says this ball uh, this drive is played a lot downhill so the ball is going to be affected more by the wind I would add around when it comes to percentage wise I would add around 20 to 25 percent in my adjustment so that is a lot when it comes to playing this drive use a power three ball in my opinion and that the reason for that is that again we're going to have a long drive and also if we go short for a second shot a power three ball would be good for us to have and i would say like when it comes to side spin and stuff like that i would say a kingmaker for pro and expert and master maybe a dead ball for master as well you want to end up with the second black market there in between the bunker and the rough and I think RJ explained it perfectly when it comes to the second shot because the second shot is going to be exactly the same if you're playing from uh, second tee, first tee or the third tee. And the importance here again is to look at the, the wind for your second shot. If having tailwind, you can actually go without topspin and have more uh, a better bounce towards the pin. But if you're having headwind, then you need to use topspin on your second shot because otherwise you will clip the rough. Uh, and something that RJ was into as well, that actually happened to me, I did forget about the trees, used curl and went into the trees there in the middle. And that was very, very unfortunate actually. So I dropped that one to a birdie. But in the end, I would say this is definitely an eagle hole. Uh, so don't focus that much on making it as an albatross hole. Take the eagle because not every one of your opponents will do that. So, hole and number three, we come to a short part four, and I think we will we are able to reach the green here in one if we're lucky. Uh, yeah, if we listen to our good friend Arnold Schwarzenegger, who was quoted before saying, get the big top on now. <laughs> so what I'm saying, <laughs> grab yourself the big topper, grab yourself a powerball, uh, full top spin, you want to make sure that you hit the uh, fairway on the right-hand side where the white line is. That full top spin will ensure you go over the water. 
you you want to make sure that uh, depending on your level of the big topper, you're you're, you're still not going to have that great of a ball guide. Um, but you want to try your best to get out of the rough without flying past the green. Um, and you know, if you play this perfectly, uh, you know, through your qualifying round, you'll be able to make adjustments, your opening round, so on and so forth. Uh, you should have a nice, easy putt for your second shot. Yeah, that is the thing that we strive for. Of course, having that easy ship close to the pin or uh, a pot for an eagle, you can see two lines, see the white line and see the black line. It's kind of pretty simple in this occasion. If we do have side win or tail win, if playing from the uh, second or third tee, then we go for the green. Uh, the only way we shouldn't go for the green if we do for some reason go out with a quarterback, I would say again, if we maybe pick the wrong club because that is the only reason we wouldn't be trying to go for the green. If having headwind, then we need to play this one on the left side, play ourselves up having a short iron towards the pin. This hole again is played downhill. There is many holes in this tournament that is played downhill, so you need to be cautious with that so you're not under adjusting your shot. So there is not that much to say more on hole number three. It's definitely an eagle opportunity. I hope we will get the win for it in the tournament. Then we will see, I would actually say that, especially on pro and expert, then this is a must eagle in my opinion. So hole number four, and I would say directly before you start RJ, this is my favorite par three in the whole game. I really, really like it. Uh, so I'm very interested to hear how players in rookie would play this one. I believe we all pretty much play it pretty much identical because this is the most gorgeous, beautiful, rough bump type hole I have ever played. I agree with you. This is one of my favorites. Uh, I, it's really fun with the sniper, but once again, um, you're going to need at least to have a sniper level two, um, you know, because you're going to want a little bit of spin. If not, uh, most of us rookies will have a Viper, which works fine as well. And uh, it's just, it's simply a rough bump. One, one and a half to two and a half top spin. Line it up. Again, I like the Sniper also because you get the really nice ball guide, but the Viper also has a decent ball guide. The Viper will definitely get you close. And if you're lucky, you'll get in the hole for the Sniper. But the Viper, um, it'll probably be... It'll probably be lucky with the Viper. I'm sorry, my brain's buffering. <laughs> you'll probably be lucky with the uh, with the Viper, but you'll be a, you'll, you definitely have a shot at an ace with the Sniper. Yeah, I agree with that. I need to add that with the Viper. If you're going to play with the Viper, make sure that you do have it upgraded in at least a level where you can have two bars of topspin. Because in Rookie, you do not have that much win, so you need to have two bars of topspin when playing this hole. So I just needed to add that so we're not playing with a low level Viper that do not have any topspin whatsoever. So when it comes from pro and expert T and also masters, and we're going to play it exactly the same way. We're going to go for the rough bump. It's just that the club is going to be played in pro and expert in a different length than in rookie. And in master, we're going to play with a driver. So, and when this hole, I have a very easy way to uh, explain and also adjust for this shot while playing from the second tee pro and expert and that is that we are going to have a club that is going to be in medium distance so when we naturally adjust for this shot we do adjust for our medium numbers for an example uh, our sniper as uh, as the key club here on this hole but we should always adjust this shot for maximum distance so even though we are in medium distance with our club we're going to have to adjust it for maximum distance of our club. And therefore, and that's for we do play this one downhill. You can hear this one. This is the fourth time in a row we say we play downhill, but that is, uh, that is very, very accurate. You do want to find the right side of the, far, uh, of the green because that will push you towards the pin. If you come too much on the left side, you will still roll on the green, but you will be pushed to the right because if you do have a, a little bit of uh, this when where the green gets so skinny, there you have this kind of a bowl-like situation where either you push to the right or you push to the left. Use the right side there. Two bars of top spin if you do have a side win. If having head win, two and a half bar. If having tail win, then reduce it just a little bit to maybe 1.75 of uh, of top spin there. I would I would bet a lot on that we will see many hole in ones of this hole, especially for you that are watching this guide. 
So, hole and number five. We come to the second part five. Another hole that we're going to play downhill. Uh, and also, a, a tricky one that we do have a lot of trees in our way. So, how do we play this one? You know, it may not look identical on the guide, but when you're actually playing it, it feels a lot like hole number two. And a lot of people are going to make mistakes if they don't if they don't take notes and end up making a uh, mistake here. Um, I like the, I believe it would be the black line. Uh, they're kind of close to uh, one another here. Basically what I do is I bring myself a quarterback and a big dog and a quasar. I like to go one top spin. Too many times do I end up going into the rough. So one top spin at most, maybe you might not want to use any, about three right spin, about half a ball curl, to the right and that should set you up nicely for your second shot now this is where the big dog comes in and depending on where you land you could take either the white line from here or the black line most people are going to be taking the black line and as long as you can bounce over the sand it does filter downhill so let me see uh let's check in my notes here for your second shot um, you want to go usually about one top spin, and then it just kind of funnels down towards the hole from there. Yeah, and this play is not going to be changed that much when it comes to pro and expert. The only thing that is going to change is the spin that you're going to play with. You do want to have as a reference spot there on the on the hole it, itself for the drive is that you do have some trees there in the bottom in the middle. And there you do have two, two brown trees you do, on the left side of the trees. The bottom tree that is brown, you use that as a reference. So you do have your landing position there because that will be perfect for you for using max topspin in so much as Apocalypse Level 5 in that amount of topspin. So you will be able to have maxed out topspin with any type of level for the extra mile. And also, uh, of course, uh, other type of clubs as well. But if we take that as an example, then we use as much side spin to the right as possible. And then we do adjust uh, this shot. Again, we're playing in medium distance with our driver. We're going to adjust it for being in maximum distance because we're playing downhill. So if we're having, for an example, we take an extra mile that has two miles per hour per ring and we have a wind adjust uh, that would you have a wind on 10 miles per hour in our guide that is maximum distance then it's five rings then we're going to adjust for five rings even though it's going to be less in medium distance you will get a perfect bounce you will land approximately around the second marker of the black line and from that position you do have a very very good approach towards the pin you need to have a wood club with a lot of curl and don't overuse this the backspin there with either backspin sorry or overuse the backspin or topspin depending on the wind that you do have if you go short then you play over the trees and uh, to just get it to green so uh, yeah also like for hole number five do use a power ball uh, not a power five ball but a power four ball a dead ball for example or a kingmaker or a titan especially from the uh, from the second tee if having 30, I would say that we do have a, a power four ball. I would actually have to say that we have had this one time from Master T and then we had some tailwind. So we just could just go full blast down the middle, try to go for green in one. I don't think the game makers will be that kind to us this time. And then it's going to be very, very tough, but it's still going to be the same play. But you might want to have a power four ball if you're playing in Master. Hoo, hole number six, and yes, I say it again. Hoo, uh, uh, Hoo <laughs> a hole where we need to get an eagle. I would, I say it again. We need to have an eagle in this hole. So how do we get the eagle in hole number six? An eagle is gotten very easy on this hole, again because you tuned in and watched this video. A lot of people are gonna try this way, that way. Really, what you want is a second bounce rough bump taking the black line i hope i'm saying that right your first bounce obviously is going to be on the fairway to jump over all those sand traps and traffic and you want your second bounce to hit the rough so because because of that you're going to need some top spin probably a minimum of three to four bars 
Uh, I like the quarterback here. Uh, let's see. I got the quarterback, and uh, I didn't have any specifics for a ball because there's nothing too tricky. I think a Marlin will be fine for us rookies if you want to use a navigator to knock down the wind a little bit more to ensure that you don't land in the rough. And then your ball should just trickle right towards the flag, giving you a nice, easy eagle. Yes, and I'm going to add that when it comes to the ball. And the thing in Rookie is that don't use a power three ball and or a power two ball. Then you might going to be in between clubs because we need to almost assume that we're going to have tailwind if you're playing Rookie. So then you most likely going to be in between clubs. So the Navigator or the, uh, the Marlin would be the best type of ball. You can also actually play this one with just a basic ball because you do want to go for the bounce there with the with according to the black line and that is how we're going to play it from second tee and most likely from the third tee as well we do want to have in mind one thing and that is again how the ball is going to be affected by the wind having side wind sure then we go with four bars four to uh, three to five bars sorry so in general like four bars of top spin might going to add a side spin to a one bar side spin to the right or to the left depending on which way would you have the crosswind to but if we're having tailwind then we need to think again okay how will our ball react after the first bounce okay it will be uh, the ball guy line will be extended due to the amount of the speed that we will be coming in with our ball so then we need to reduce top spin as we will either otherwise bounce over the rough there on top so okay then we reduce we take maybe two and a half three bars top spin max and then when we come to headwind then again then we need to make full amount of top spin it's like a uh, full amount of top spin because again the ball guideline will be compressed and it will give us a very tough second bounce in the rough because when we bounce the first time our ball will lose speed and then bouncing up in the air again it will lose even more speed and while then dropping down into the rough uh, where it should then we, you will get this very very sticky bounce so you kind of need to get to the far way of that uh, rough so you don't get stuck in the rough i know it might uh, sound a bit technical when i'm explaining about that but i think it's very very important to explain that to you so you do not miss that and understand uh, or and also understand how the ball is actually going to be reacting in that particular way with the adjust here you do going to play this hole again it's downhill so you do need to add a little bit more with your adjustment and of course with pro and expert we are playing this hole in medium distance of our driver then we need to adjust for maximum distance when it comes to master we play our hole here in maximum distance and then we need to add approximately around 10 to 15 percent in adjustment so okay uh, then we do have the white line i know i'm talking a lot here now but i'm going to just keep going with the white line and that is basically for some kind of a power slice towards the green you need to have a club with a good amount of curl you also need to have a, a, a driver with a good amount of backspin i would say at least five six seven bars of backspin so and with having left to right wind you can basically go with max curl with an apocalypse or another driver uh, the quarterback for an example and bounce yourself onto the green as well but that only applies for pro and expert so it's a hole that offers a lot of opportunities i would say that this again it's a must eagle the most common white black line but you know the white line could come in handy to play but check out the playthrough that comes out on tuesday then we have been uh, deciding which way to play this hole Hoorah! Uh, hoorah! Hole number seven, part three, the last part three, and we do see like, uh, wow, uh, all like all types of colors on this one here. So, how do we play this one, RJ? And Tommy, you got really busy with your friends on this <laughs> one, didn't you? <laughs> Definitely. Actually, the, actually uh, this is like this is excellent. It's such a simple, straightforward hole, but so many different ways to attack it. Personally, for me, I want to do another rough bump with the uh, with the purple line. I'm going to do uh, do that with the quarterback. You're going to need your driver at that distance, and uh, I would use about two to three backspin. You don't want to go sailing off the green into the rough or or whatnot. And also, I would aim towards the bottom of the rough a little bit to compensate 
because, as Tommy likes to uh, point out with this tournament, a lot of downhill shots. <laughs> so I think for us in rookie, with the minimum wind that we get, I think aiming a little bit lower on the rough might be enough to, uh, you know, to get us to where we need to get there. However, we are also going to have people who aren't comfortable with the rough bump on this particular shot. And in that case, I would say go with the black line for rookie. And as Tommy says, the black line is often his preferred line when playing with the tailwind. You aim the ball on the left side of the bunker using half a bar of backspin without hitting the rough. This hole plays downhill, as I had mentioned earlier, which means your ball is affected more by the wind. Yes, and I will just have to add in the beginning, I don't know uh, how RJ can say that it's uh, it's a purple line when it's blue, but as it said in the text, it's a blue line for the rough bump. I, <laughs> yeah, I just need to. I just want to be a bit funny. Sorry about that. But it's the blue line when it comes to the rough bump. And pro and expert, we are going to play the rough bump basically with whatever wind. And sure, it's going to be a bit trickier for us to adjust for uh, the rough bump, and we need to require at least a shot that is uh, not perfect, but maybe great. We can't miss it more. Uh, using one and a half bar backspin with having headwind, if having tailwind, then we you, you do need to use two and a half bar of backspin because we will have a different speed depending on the wind that we're going to have, of course. Uh, adjust this one as uh, from Pro and Expert, we do play this one in uh, medium distance of our club. We do have to adjust for being in maximum distance. And again, now I think this is the third time we say it all together. It's played downhill on this hole. So that is the reason because of that. If you feel, don't feel comfortable from the second or from the third tee, or like especially I would say second tee, go by the black line there. I would say the third tee or is basically the ones for the white line or for the yellow line because you are going to be uh, playing with a driver uh, on that one like every single time on prone expert and on rookie you're going to in some cases especially with the black line going to play with a uh, wood club but then you can use a driver i would prefer the quarterback or maybe the rocket that you have some backspin to play either left side or right side there white or yellow line depending on the wind that we're going to have on this hole so hole in number eight two more holes to go one par four and one par five and then we do have some water here on hole number eight so how do we play hole number eight well you know something i i just i have to insist on something we got to go back to hole seven for oh. a split second yeah that is purple and <laughs> I wanna tell all you guys who are watching this who got this far in the video when you have your questions or if you want to leave a comment, leave a comment on that, whether you're Team RJ or Team Tommy. Team Tommy says blue. T uh, no, yeah, Team RJ says purple. That's purple, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I guess I guess we learn differently in school. So it's... Uh... <laughs> or my monitor too, uh, might be a little off. Okay, um, awesome, awesome. Sorry. All right. Sorry about that. I had to get that in. Uh, hole eight, I like to call the Viper hole. Why? We don't need a driver for this hole. I like to take the white line. Uh, use your backspin and some side spin. And if you feel confident use a little bit of curl to try to get into that little nook where you see that little white line the reason i like taking that line so well is because you get more you get to use the fairway and the green to get to the hole the black line is perfectly fine as well um but personally i just like to take advantage of that remember we are going over water so is it an extra bar or an extra uh, mile per hour not sure i'm sure tommy will clear that up for us but basically in two you know two viper shots or maybe that's a long iron i, I could be mistaken um and you'll be able to uh to get yourself a nice easy birdie on this hole yeah uh, definitely the white lines definitely in play and uh, the wind that we do have of course the termines that i would say like from the third tee, master tee, the white line could definitely be in play, especially with some heavy head wind. Uh, but if we're having any other type of wind, I would play according to the black line. I would add half a ring to a ring extra in the adjustment on this hole, uh, just to 
just to counter for the water that we do have in play. Uh, the thing that I do want to have as a reference when it comes to playing, because I did get a question in a training session, how, Tommy, could you be so sure of being so close to the top with that black, like, with that black line or with your driver there? First and foremost, I would use a quarterback here if you do have it upgraded to level 10. Otherwise, I would use whatever drive you actually have. You do have your landing position on the middle of the fairway. Uh, with then you turn your screen around, so you actually do have the war the end of the water uh, in basically the same type of line as you do have the landing position. So you use that as a reference while adjusting for that. Then you use one bar of topspin if you're having a uh, sidewind. You're using uh, n uh, one bar of backspin if having a tailwind. If you're having headwind, then you use two bars of topspin instead. So that is how I make sure that I make my drive in a very good way to get to the top. I do want to use a power three ball here if I'm going with this a little bit more aggressive line because I will have problems and be in between clubs with my short iron and my long iron while going for the shot towards the pin. If everything is executed as it should be, then we do have a thorn with an amazing, uh, amazingly good amount of backspin. You line it up and you do want to hit just by the end of the fringe. You can actually, if having headwind, then you can bounce directly onto the fairway. Just, sorry, just by, uh, just directly on the green, because the ball, again, is going to be affected differently with the bounce if having tailwind, headwind, or sidewind. But that is the shot that you're going to have to take. If you're going short with that shot, it's very important that you do have a Saturn in your bag. You do have a Saturn with as much backspin as possible so you can land directly onto the green. So this was hole number eight. So two ways, conservative or a little bit more aggressive, but it doesn't really matter which one of them you take. You need to secure your birdie and you need to play it in the way that you feel comfortable uh, on playing. And we're going to end up with a hole that we actually did discuss before we started this recording, because it it's a weird hole. I'll let you start, RJ. <laughs> uh, yes, indeed it is. This is uh, this looks so straightforward on screen here, but this gives so many people fits, and that's simply because it's so easy to hit the rough, end up in the rough, and that could totally mess up your shot, especially if you hit the rough near the uh, the first box on your drive uh, because your your sand wedge or your rough iron for us rookies might not even get you over that little bit of water. So I'm gonna explain a conservative way for us to get a birdie on this hole. And Tommy, uh, I guess will follow up right after me if, and if you wanna be a little bit more aggressive, if you have more upgraded clubs, that might be the way to go. Did you notice this entire video I have gone through without using the extra mile once until now. I would definitely recommend using the extra mile uh, on the drive here, although you may use a little bit of backspin and lay it up a little uh, potentially and try to get your ball not to bounce where that black box is, the very first one, but to actually stop there, stopping right before the rough and the, the sand trap on the right. That will set you up with a nice big dog shot, getting you very close to the sand that separates the, the fairway from the putting green. Uh, well, no, it's not gonna get you up that high, I'm sorry. That'll get you about halfway there at the halfway mark of that line. Then you should have a long iron shot, uh, perhaps a Saturn or something, uh, to land on the green, this is the safest way, in my opinion, to go as rookie because the drive on this has to be just perfect. And if you have an extra mile five and you don't have these, uh, you know, these higher level balls, it's really tricky to curl and bend around to get into the dog leg right before the river there. So I say just cut it out all together and take the conservative approach here and Tommy will tell us how to get there in two. Yes, I'm going to do uh, at least my very best. And I will have to add when it, comes to, um, when it comes to this hole and to every hole, when you go through it yourself in your mind and with your notes and stuff like, stuff like that, it, 
it is very risk and reward when it comes to every single hole really how to determine which way to take okay if i'm going to play a bit more aggressive what do i risk and what do i get in reward so i will have to say like for i think rj is did perfectly explained uh, to play conservative if you uh, might have low level clubs because then you will have a very very tough time to reach for the green into even though you played very aggressively because the thing that you risk while playing aggressively is that you put the bunkers in play in in a in many more ways than you would do otherwise and if you put yourself in the rough or in the bunker and having a low level rough iron or a sandwich then you potentially put the birdie in risk for just doing a par on a par five and then doing a par on a par five then we can say bye bye gold in the tournament for example or bye bye top 50 even if we do manage to just make a par so okay so we're going to start off by saying here like if having headwind then we can say bye bye going to green in two because then we will have headwind for the second shot and we won't be able to reach for the green then then we need to play it conservative again but with sidewind or tailwind kind of changes around a bit and i do believe and i do hope that the game makers will give us some tailwind on this hole because that will make it still very hard but it's going to be possible for us to reach for the green in two. The thing that we do want to do with Tailwind is that we do want to uh, make a drive that bounces just before the rough there on top on the first piece of fairway. We do want to either use overpower or use the Tailwind that we do have, bounce it with 0 0.5 bars of backspin to one and a half bar of backspin depending on how much tailwind you do have with that bounce you will let that ball bounce over the bunker put yourself as close to the rough as possible okay very very tough drive that we start with for the second shot then we will be able to reach towards this the third black box there just by the rough uh, and then you had a, you had the bunker and you have the green you can see there on top then you get to reach there and you need to use no topspin you do need to use at least like at least plain like no topspin no backspin or i would prefer having like one bar or two bars of tops uh, of backspin sorry it's backspin i'm talking about one bar of two bars of backspin if i would prefer to use something if uh, having to decide between having more topspin on your shot or having top spin and uh, nonetheless and also have to overpower i would choose overpower because if you're using and coming in with too much speed then we will roll off the green and put yourself in the rough or into the bunker on top there so the drive do determine if you're going to be able to reach for the green in two and again headwind it's a no-no then play it up uh, do a conservative way have a wedge or a short iron or a long iron towards the pin to potentially make you that eagle so hole number nine then uh, everyone and this has been a long video but filled with knowledge and it's definitely going to help you uh, getting a better score in the game if you want to get the text guides directly to your phone your tablet or maybe to your computer to print it out then you check the video description down below and you will get the link to the imgur file that do have the text scared uh, text guides there so yeah i think we covered it all do you have any uh, final uh, final thoughts rj or maybe you could add how you will stream this tournament uh actually i, I have a question oh. and i'm thinking this question may also it has a lot to do with the video okay there, there are a few like streams like you could see on hole nine here very very thin area of water when making your adjustment on your shot over the water in this case it would be a wood shot do you still do a percentage or an extra wind ring or is that only for bigger gaps of water as opposed to the little streams i would be uh, in this particular case because it's uh, differently depending on how, mu how much water and, and also how the hole is set up and uh, we'll have to have in mind that i would play this one in if i would be playing it in maximum distance i would be playing it exactly as my ring guide says i would do because sure it might affect my ball a little bit by playing over the water but we're also playing slightly uphill so those two uh, val uh, values do kind of counter each other out so a little bit uphill uh, affects the ball a little bit less by the wind 
a little bit over water, affects the ball a little bit by the wind, so counter it, each other out, and I would play it exactly as my ring guide would say it would be. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, Mondays are late days for me, so I'll probably do a practice stream on Monday, and then we'll wrap things up on Tuesday and Wednesday, so 8 o'clock Eastern uh, on Monday, 8-ish, <laughs> and uh, 6 o'clock Eastern on Tuesday and just about every other day of the tournament. Awesome, and for me as well, at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, depending here. I'm not going to stream Thursday and Friday, so opening round, I'm not going to stream. Uh, I usually do stream uh, either like Thursday or Friday, but I'm going to um, uh, Waterland with my daughter, so I'm going to spend my time there. I will be playing though, but I will not be streaming those days. But otherwise, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Saturday, and Sunday, there will be streams here on the channel. So hit the thumbs up button here on the video and uh, also get some hype, get ready for the next tournament. So how do we end the stream? Get the big top and now! <laughs> no, wait. Um, happy stroking. Happy stroking, everyone. <laughs>